Welcome to the Kazone Experience. I'm so thankful that you've taken some time and put it aside to really seek God and invest in hearing from God for your future. Because let's be honest, so many people wander through life. They stumble trying to make some sort of a difference, but never seem to end up somewhere significant. In fact, in the Kazone Experience, we'll say again and again that everyone ends up somewhere but few people end up somewhere on purpose. Everyone ends up somewhere, but few people have a plan, have a vision, and end up in a very specific place because God led them to that place. The good news is that before you even existed, God knew you, He shaped you, and He created you, put you at this moment in history because your gifts, your talents, your passions are best designed for you to glorify God at this moment in history. And I believe as you seek God prayerfully that you're not just going to end up somewhere, but you're going to end up somewhere on purpose. So the Kazone experience will help you do two things. The first thing is you're going to prayerfully discover God's purpose for your life and number two, you're gonna develop a realistic plan to start working toward living out that purpose because everyone ends up somewhere, but few people end up somewhere on purpose. And I believe with all my heart that living with a purpose is the difference between just existing and thriving in the way that you live. So you may say, what is kazon? Well, Kazon comes from Proverbs 29, 18, and the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision. The word in the Hebrew that's translated as vision is the word kazon. To say it the right way, you almost have to act like you're clearing your throat like, like that, but don't do that if someone's sitting too close to you. But it's chazon, C-H-A-Z-O-W-N. And this word means a dream, a revelation, or vision, where there is no dream, where there is no revelation, where there is no vision, people perish. I believe that to live the life that God intended for you, you need to have a vision, a driving force that directs you. Think about it. Where there is no relational vision, over half of the marriages end up in divorce and people struggle relationally. Where there is no physical vision, people eat whatever they want, do whatever they want, and unfortunately then their bodies won't do what they're supposed to do. Where there is no financial vision, people struggle hurting financially in debt and in bondage. Where there is no spiritual vision, rather than selflessly serving Christ, people end up serving themselves. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, when we look at the life of Jesus, we're gonna see that Jesus actually knew his vision. He knew why God created him, why God sent him. He was God, so he had a little advantage. But nonetheless, Jesus said this in Luke 19.10. Jesus said, the Son of Man came to seek and save that which is lost. That's why he was on earth. He wasn't here to bring religion. He was here to seek those who are without a relationship with God, to give his life, and to reveal the love of the Father to them. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. That was his kazon. He said in John 10, 18, he said, no one can take my life from me. Jesus said, I lay it down on my own accord. Then Jesus said, this command I received from my father. This is why I'm here. I came to lay down my life, to shed my blood for the forgiveness of sins. This is why I'm here. I've come to seek and save the lost. I've come to lay down my life. No one takes my life from me. I lay it down. Now, as we seek God for our kazon, our vision, our dream, our revelation, I want to talk to you very specifically about three distinct circles that you'll see in your notes. Our circles include past experiences. These are the events and the people who helped shape you to become who you are today, our past experiences. We're also going to talk about our core values. What are core values? Those are the things that might keep you up at night, the things for which you're willing to die, the places where you'll draw a line in the sand and say, I really value this. This is what means the most to me. Then we're gonna talk about spiritual gifts. 
These are those special and unique abilities that God has given to you to help prepare you for all that God has for you. Now, where your three circles overlap, that's where you're going to find your kazon, God's unique vision for you. When you have kazon, the good news is you have a sense of purpose. You wake up in the morning and you realize, I've got something significant to do today. You have a peace that goes beyond your human ability to understand when you hear from God and know what He wants you to do. When you have kazon, you will have direction. Also, we're going to talk about five different spokes. If you can imagine your kazon being the hub, but it being supported by five different spokes, we're going to seek God for how we develop kazon within the five different spokes. The first spoke is what we call our relationship with God. We start there because it's so important. With God, you can either be cold, you can be lukewarm, or you can be on fire. And Jesus said, I would rather you be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I spit you out. Unfortunately, so many people today are lukewarm with God because there is no vision for a strong and growing relationship with God. Hebrews 2.1 tells us we must pay careful attention to what we've heard so we don't drift away. The second spoke is our relationship with others. Jesus said the greatest command is to love God, and then we're told to love others. We're going to develop our kazon for our relationship with others. The third spoke is our financial life, because everyone ends up somewhere, but few people end up somewhere on purpose. And it, when it comes to finances, most people do not end up somewhere on purpose. They end up in the hole, and we're going to look at how do we dig out of that hole and become strong and generous financially. The fourth spoke is our physical life. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Therefore, honor God with your body. Unfortunately, today, people don't have a plan. They have a very short-sighted view of their body. They, they'll get suntanned today, and then their skin cancer tomorrow. They'll eat too much today. They'll be overweight tomorrow. They'll ignore their body today and have problems tomorrow because there is no kazone for their physical life. The fifth area we're going to look at, the fifth spoke, is your work life. And you may find that your kazone is tied to your work life. Like you're called to help people and so you're a nurse, or you're called to educate and you're a teacher. And you may find that your work life is very tied to your kazone, or you may find that God has you in a very specific place so that you can minister to those who are already around you. Now, here's what we hope to accomplish. By going through your Kazone experience, I believe you're going to hear from God and His Holy Spirit is going to direct you. So, you're no longer just going to stumble half-heartedly through life and hope you end up with an amazing story. But instead, you're going to wake up and say, this is what God has created me to do. In fact, Acts 20, 24 is what I consider to be my life verse and it also reveals Paul's Kazone. Paul said, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I can finish the race, he said, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. And then he says, it's to preach the gospel and to share the good news. How would you finish that sentence? My life is worth nothing to me, if only I may. By the end of our time, I believe that you'll be able to fill in that blank. My life is worth nothing to me, if only I can do this, because this is what God called me to do. I'm so thankful that God has helped reveal His kazone to me. Years ago, we had a vision to be debt-free, to have children that really served God, and to lead a growing church that leads people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. When I wake up, I wake up with kazone, with purpose, with direction, with peace, and with satisfaction in knowing that I'm doing what God called me to do. And I believe that's what He wants for you. Because everyone ends up somewhere, but few people end up somewhere on purpose. And the good news is, with God's help, you will end up somewhere on purpose. You know, discovering my Kazone really changed the entire course of my life. When, when I first discovered my Kazone and went through the Kazone experience, uh, I had just quit my job. I didn't know where I was going to go career-wise. My wife had just quit her job as well, and we had moved to a new city. And through this process, uh, God showed us what He wanted us to do, and we've been able to try to live that out ever since. 
Going through the Kazon experience has helped me to be more purposeful with my time. Um, you know, instead of wasting time, I feel like I focus more on um, the priorities in life. I remember going to college, changing my major left and right, trying to figure out what God wanted me to do. When I discovered my Kazone, God dropped that passion and the desire upon my life to where I, at that point I knew exactly where I was going and I knew exactly where I needed to start chasing after. It helped me to know that everything I've went through and everything I experienced from my past was for a reason. There was going to be good from it, that God was going to use it to help others. It brought my past and my future into my present and it helped it make sense so that I knew what my direction was and that God had a, a purpose for me. Uh, Discovering my Kazone has definitely, definitely affected my life because it has allowed me to live my life intentionally. Um, I think somewhat before I was doing that and I was somewhat kind of honing on my skills, but it has allowed me to focus on what God has truly uh, called me to do.